Good morning and welcome again to Friday Morning Theology with Father Irwin. Excited to be here with you today and I hope that the beginning of your Lenten season has been good. It's only been two days. We're on our first Friday of Lent and we're getting ready to go into the desert with Jesus. The first Sunday of Lent, we always hear that gospel of the Jesus being tempted in the desert. And so um, what a great way to start beautiful gospel to meditate on. But today we're going to think a little bit about the sacrament of confession. I hope you have a cup of coffee. You can't read this unless you can read backwards, but this is one of my favorite mugs. It says, be careful or you will end up in my sermon. This is one of the many gifts given to me over the years by parishioners and um it's a fun mug i enjoy it let's say a prayer in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen from john's gospel john chapter 20 on the evening of that day the first day of the week the doors being shut where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And then, and when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Heavenly Father, we come before you with great gratitude for your sacraments especially the sacrament of mercy, healing, and forgiveness we receive in confession. Forgive us always our sins and help us to return to you with our whole heart. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you. In your name we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sacrament of Confession. So I hope that all of you who are watching this actually go to confession. Um, but you know, we all have a certain feeling about confession and throughout our lives maybe have gone more, have gone less, or we're afraid of it, or we're not sure always what to say confession, or I don't want to go to my pastor, so I need to go find a priest for confession. Um, I've been through all of that. I will fully admit and confess. There was a long period of time before I was a priest <laughs> where I didn't go to confession. Many years. Um, I My mom's watching this, so sorry, mom, this is true. Um, and not because I you know, had something against it. Uh, one thing was... I just had in my mind, well, I don't really need to go. But also, I was, af I was afraid. I was afraid. It was finally in college. Um, I was at a retreat, and I was being really moved and pulled by the Holy Spirit to to go deeper into my faith. And, and I knew, I just intellectually, I knew I've got to make a good confession. I haven't been in a long time. It's time. What I knew was is that that sacrament, going to that sacrament would help heal and, and start me on a path of great healing and receiving of the love and mercy of Jesus. So I hope that many of you, all of you who are watching, who are thinking about what do I do during Lent. Well, one of the most important things to do during the season of Lent, especially if you haven't been in a long time, is go to confession. 
But I was reading this beautiful little article about um, something Pope Francis said, well, several things he said about the sacrament of confession. So my further reflection with you is kind of based on some of these beautiful points he made in, in, his, uh, in this article. He was speaking to a group of young people about the sacrament of confession. Maybe it was at a World Youth Day. I, I couldn't find the exact context. One of the things he starts off with, he says, the sacrament of confession is a sacrament of joy. He calls it a feast. And that's odd to think of it because usually you think of the sacrament of the Eucharist as the feast, and that's true. He says the sacrament of confession is a sacrament where we feast because we're receiving in abundance the mercy of God. We receive in abundance his love. And it's that mercy and love that brings us back into communion with the church and with him. Because what does sin do? It separates us, especially the mortal sin. Uh, mortal sin is death. It separates us from the life of God, and it separates us from the life of the church. And we don't want to be fully separated or outside of that relationship. We want to be fully in communion with God and his church so that we can receive every grace and every love that the Lord wants to give. So the sacrament of confession is a great feast of mercy, of forgiveness, and of reconciliation. So he's speaking in a sense to not just to the young people here, he's speaking to all of us. The, for one of the things he says is the sacrament of confession is a remedy, a remedy, he uses that word, a remedy for our suffering. So true because the sacrament of confession is a sacrament of healing, like also like the anointing of the sick. It's, it's a healing sacrament in that the grace given to us penetrates heart and mind. It not only forgives sins, but it helps to bring us back into a, a wholeness with God. And we want that so badly. One of the things he says to these young people, to us, he says that sin is not the sole focus of confession. We bring our sins, but sin, the sin itself, is not what we should be focusing on. We focus, the focus of confession is God and what God is doing for us. We don't focus on our sin. Uh, uh, I remember a, a priest in seminary saying this, saying it in this way to me. He says, so often with sin, we find ourselves being turned away and we, have, we look at the sin. We're focusing on the sin, like, why did I do that? How could I do that? I'm so ashamed. I'm upset. I'm frustrated. Why do I keep sinning? And so the devil f turns our focus away from God to the sin itself. And that in and of itself is part of the plan of the devil to take our focus away from God. And so sin is not the sole focus of confession. The focus is God what God is doing. What is he doing? Loving us. God is loving us in this sacrament. And so sin is not the sole focus. The focus is God. So the center, the centerpiece of the sacrament of confession, then Pope Francis says, is our encounter with God. The God who forgives us, who welcomes us back, who raises us up. I always love the image of when you go to confession, it's like going into the tomb, right? You go into the, the tomb with Jesus, but we know that Jesus did not stay in the tomb. 
he was transfigured, transformed, he was resurrected, and he got up and he left the tomb, which is the same with us in the sacrament of confession. We go in because there's a death, because we leave our sins that, that are evil, we need to leave them there, and we rise up and we get out of there after we've received reconciliation and absolution. There's a resurrection happening within us, and we have to rise up and leave and go out and be disciples. Remember the, the prodigal son story, too. There's this great image. The Pope says, welcome. We should, excuse me, we should come to the sacrament of confession as children. We come to the sacrament of confession as children children of our heavenly father because like the prodigal son story we see the image the father the heavenly father runs to his children to forgive them that's a beautiful the, the holy the, our heavenly father is so eager to forgive us and bring us back into the church and to his love and to communion with him. God has a great eagerness to forgive us. So we come to confession as children, not as frightened like strangers. No, as children. This is a great pope or a great quote from Pope Francis. He says, God is never ashamed of you. He loves you right right there where you are he loves you right there where you are ashamed of yourself and in that he loves you always listen to that quote again God is never ashamed of you he loves you right there where you are ashamed of yourself and he loves you always. Beautiful. And isn't that like the core truth of healing, the healing we need, that interior healing? We have to be willing to invite God and our Lord right into the midst of the pain and the suffering and the shame and all the things that sin brings and all the lies and deceit of the devil. When you don't go to confession, it can be like saying to God, God, you are weak in love. Because we're saying things like, you know, sometimes we can actually believe and say to God, God, I'm unforgivable. Like this sin I did and what I did, how could you forgive me? And so we don't go to confession and we don't seek God because we think that we're not worthy. No, this is not right. It's like saying to God, you're, I, you and I were just not strong enough to love each other. No, we can't do that. Or we say, you know, sort of the opposite thing is I, I'm not a sinner. I don't, I don't really sin that bad. You know, I, I, you know, I'm good. I'm good here. Thanks, God. And, uh, of course, that's deceit and that's the lies of the devil. It doesn't work that way. All of us are sinners, fall short of the love of God. We need to seek forgiveness. In that gospel I read at the beginning, John reveals to us that Jesus actually, before... Pentecost, like the great Pentecost in the Acts of the Apostles, in John's Gospel, there was a smaller Pentecost here. Jesus came to his disciples and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. He breathed on them. So he passed, he's passing on a power to them. And he says, the sins that you forgive are forgiven. The sins you retain are retained. He gave them the power of reconciliation to forgive sins that's passed on to the bishops and the priests of the church 
So if anybody ever says to you, the sacrament of confession, that's not biblical. It, yes, it is. It's right there in John's gospel. <laughs> it's very biblical. It's very much a part of the church from the very beginning because of this truth that God wants to pour out mercy upon mercy upon us. He wants to give us sin or give us the mercy to forgive sins. He wants to love us so fully and so beautifully. God does not see a sinner and label them. The Pope says that. I thought that was beautiful. When God looks at us, he doesn't see a sinner and put a label upon us. No. He sees his son or his daughter and he loves them. Go to confession frequently, as often as you think you may need. Certainly go during the time, this time of Lent, and I hope that many of you will encounter in this sacrament God's great love. Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.